having a live Q and A session towards the end of the discussion. In case you have any queries, kindly note them down, and we'll address them in the Q and A session. So do stay till the end to get all your queries solved. So I would like to introduce everyone to today's panelists. First, we have Mr. Nikhil Agarwal, who has secured an internship at Zoom. So Nikhil, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, yes, sure. Thank you for having me here. Uh, my name is Nikhil Agarwal. I have been uh, recently graduated from IIT Kharagpur from chemical department. And yeah, I secured an internship and it was an off-campus internship at Sony where I worked for 10 months. And apart from that, like I have been recently placed at MTX. It was an on-campus uh, on campus placement itself. So that's about myself. Uh, thank you for the, your introduction, Nikhil. So our next panelist is Mr. Deep Kalantri, who has backed an inter internship at LEK Consulting. So Deep, would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, am I audible? Yeah, you are. You are audible. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Deep Kalantri. I'm a scientist. Uh, IIT Kharagpur for Bachelor's in Agriculture and Master's in Currently, I'm a uh, Yeah, thank you for your introduction. Next, we have Ms. Pradipti Thakur, who has secured an internship at JPMC. Pradipti, please introduce yourself. Yeah, uh, am I audible to everyone? Yeah, you are audible. Okay, hi Nikhil, hi Deep. Really nice to see you guys on the panel. And uh, hello everyone, good evening. Uh, my name is Pradipti Thakur. I'm a fourth year undergrad uh, student from the Department of Biotechnology. And uh, I secured an internship at uh, JP Morgan Chase, uh, which I'm currently doing right now. And uh, it's, uh, its duration was for about two months and I got it through the CDC itself. Uh, so I hope to have a wonderful session today. Yeah, thank you for your introduction, Pradipti. The heartiest congratulations to all of you. So let's start our uh, CV building session by getting to know the importance of CV uh, in bagging and investing. Yeah, so uh, Nikhil, uh, would you like to start? Uh, yeah, sure. So obviously, uh, CV uh, actually expresses uh, who, are, who you are. Like it basically uh, tells the interviewer or uh, the shortlisting team itself that what have you done till two years or three years of your college life? Be it like any uh, app, like presence in your uh, society or anything you have done in the past, like self projects, internships, and all of these things. So basically, it defines you, and I think it's a very uh, like it plays a crucial role for shortlisting you because uh, just by looking at your CV, one can judge you that uh, like how capable you are or how uh, related related to you are for that job description itself. So I think it's a very important. Uh, thing or like if, during the CDC time. So Pradipti and deep your views. I agree with uh, Nikhil and adding to that, I, I mean, it actually helps all the employers and recruiters to grab attention to what your specific skill sets are uh, as to help them uh, to ju judge your uh, qualifications for the role. So in that aspect, the CV is actually very important uh, because it's the first piece of uh, a paper that any employer goes through it and judges you. Yeah, but you can go ahead. Yeah, uh, so I agree with uh, Deep and Nikhil. Uh, so basically your CV is like your first impression, uh, right? So it just uh, tells what kind of a person you are. And because recruiters have so many CVs to go through, so many CVs to look at, they're like a thousands of CVs that they have to go through. Your CV should actually stand out. It should be something different that the recruiter should be able to uh, take you, you know, uh, give you a, an internship by looking at the CV itself. So that's why CV is like a super important part of an internship. Yes. So, Deep, uh, would you like to start with this? Yeah, sure. So, uh, 
structure of a CV. Uh, so if you're talking specifically with regard to CDC, so we have a CV portal on ERP to which CV can be made. So there, uh, it's, there, there are specific set of defined uh, headers under which you have to input all your uh, uh, whatever content that you have. So I think it's on the next slide, the type of details that are there on a CV, like awards and achievements, uh, internships and projects, uh, extracurricular activities, your basic information about academics, uh, then it can be research experiences. And there's also an option to customize, like just know the heading exactly, like what do you want to write? So these are the basic four or five things which are there in a resume. And at the end, you generally have your extracurricular or hobbies. And the order of the, the like this, POR, skills, internships, this may vary depending on the type of profile you apply, the type of company you are willing to apply, and your uh, uh, previous work or experience in that domain. So yeah, that we can discuss later. Uh, yeah, so I want to add it to it. So I agree with it that uh, he said, uh, like different profiles, the different ordering structure would be there. So basically, like we will cover uh, like at the end that uh, in software or uh, consulting or any other profile, what is the prof perfect order structure for uh, maintaining your CV? So, but the basic details, uh, it is present right now. You can see, right? Uh, the PORs, awards and achievements, all these should be mentioned in your CV because uh, you have to write something to fill your CV at least for one page. So this is the structure and like uh, depending on the profile, we can elaborate further. Uh, yeah, uh, actually, uh, uh, is everyone able to see uh, the structure of the CV page? Because I wasn't able to see it earlier. Yeah, I think it's uh, visible for the presenters, but uh, I'm just asking the audience if it's visible to them. Yeah, it's visible. Okay, okay. If that's the case, it's fine. Yeah, so uh, if you just come onto the slide, you have the structure of a CV. So um, first of all, your personal and educational details go in there, right? Uh, that's the first part of your CV. And then below that, you put in your um, internships and projects and educational details, um, after which you put in your positions of responsibility, skills and coursework, whatever you've done. And after that, you have all of your extracurricular stuff. So that's basically the structure of a CV. And it can vary from profile to profile uh, based on whatever profile you're targeting, be it software or analytics, consulting, finance, or product management, any of these profiles. Um, it would just change a couple of things would change here and there. And the importance given to each of these segments or each of these sections would vary. So I think that would be the structure of a CV the ideal structure of a CV and uh, a lot of people uh, like to change the structure, but I think this uh, should be the ideal structure. This is what recruiters generally prefer. Yes, thank you. Moving on. Uh, so uh, Deep, who do you like the strategies? So actually, uh, I mean, making of a CVLP model, so uh, when you are making a CV or just make, uh, trying to make a CV from scratch, you can try to follow a LP model. So what exactly an LP model is, uh, it is learning, planning and execution. So uh, these steps you can follow. You can go to the next slide to elaborate. So yeah, in learning, learning you can probably try to have a look at the resumes of the senior or uh, the, the your batchmates who have done previous internships that in that domain what sort of pointers that they had and and what generally recruiters think you can have a look on the websites as well as to what do they look out for in specific skill sets that will give you an idea about learning then you can try to plan as to what would be your order of the uh, pointers or headers in your cv and then you can probably execute it and like fill all the contents that you have. Uh, 
Dipti, would you like to add on something? Yeah, I think uh, Deep has covered it very well. Uh, the learning, planning, and execution model. Uh, so I think I don't have any other points to add. Nikhil, would you like to add? Uh, I think uh, I would add in the execution part, so we can move on to that. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm starting. So as you can see, the star, the famous star method. So in the execution part, like as Deep said, like the learning and the planning is done. So now how we have to implement and structure your CV, we have to always uh, like maintain this star method structure. Like it's good to uh, like apply this method. So as you can see, the, there are like four, uh, like I would say checkboxes to this star method, situation, task, action, and results. So basically, uh, whenever you write your points in an internship or project, anything, just maintain three points, uh, like which covers these four aspects. So in my point of view, situation and task can be molded into one point, the first point. Second can be your action uh, point, and third would be the results point. So I actually molded my CV into this format and tried to write situation task in the first point itself and like that for as follows. So in the situation uh, and the task, you can write basically what you have done in the internship and what was the task given to you. Like what have you actually, uh, achieve, like what do you want to achieve? So kind of aim. And then the action, which basically means that uh, like be it a web development or be it machine learning, what algorithms do you have applied and how did you apply it? So that can be the action which you want to write it in that there. And the result would be how much you optimized, like what was the result, uh, like any website link which you have made or can you can say that like you optimized or like accuracy uh, reached to 90% like that. So these are the result stuff which you uh, want to include at the last. So this is all about the SAR method. Now Deep, you can add onto it. So SAR method is basically a sort of guideline that you can follow to make sure that your the the content of your specific project internship or extracurricular POR looks well rounded and decent when you when you present it to a recruiter. So situation, so we can discuss it one by one. Situation basically sort of a header, a one liner stating what exactly was the task or what exactly was the situation that you put in and the broad objective of your internship for a couple of uh, months or whatever duration that you had. So for example, it can be working on a tech project uh, for XYZ months and the objective was to increase the revenue, so something like that. Then you can have a task that what what was the task? What were the tasks given to you? The task was to uh, identify the channels for a market entry or for a for a company, something like this. Maybe the action then can be like what analysis that you performed for achieving that task. You could have performed a like you could have run a risk model or you could have done an Excel analysis. Whatever anal analysis that you have done, what actions you took, you talk to users, you, you whatever actually that you can write in the action point and finally the results what was the overall outcome for example you could reach out to uh, nine potential companies out of which 10 converted and due to which the revenue increased by xyz percent so that sort of thing can be the overall result highlighting this this was the situation and uh, this was the result that you achieved and regarding the number of points what i'd like to say is that depending on the content that you have in your resume your uh, information about a particular project or intern can be of three line, four line or five line, depending on what work you did. But generally it's preferred to have one heading and three lines, three lines are preferred or you can have four as well. So no worries on that part. That actually again depends on the font size, font style that you are using. Dr. Deepthi, you can go ahead. Yeah, uh, so I think uh, Nikhil and uh, Deep, uh, the STAR method uh, pretty well. I would like to add that whenever you're using the STAR method, just try to be very specific. Uh, like whatever you're mentioning, uh, keep it precise, keep it concise. Don't make it, uh, don't beat around the bush and uh, keep it very to the point. Uh, just put it in a line and put just three points the, as they suggested. Just three lines mentioning. Um, your situation, what action you took, and what were the results. That's all. So these three lines. 
think I would, uh, I think it would be uh, uh, now the star method, I think you can use, so you can put in that, uh, what, what was, what was the aim of the competition? What, uh, you know, what action you took to complete that particular or to achieve that frame and then what results you got in the end so you can do this method helps a lot and you can just go through these three things and your interviewer will understand what uh, what exactly you're trying to convey to him so i, I hope that helps it's insightful uh, deep would you uh, uh, like to give your views on this uh, so for example uh, to to have an idea of how exactly your star method is or what you can follow, you can have a look at the resume on on the screen. So let's say uh, let's take a look at the Nestle India in, in the internship section. The internship is at Nestle India. So it's basically a supply chain intern at the location, and on the side there is the duration of the internship that is there. So the project in the heading you can just it's a broad overview of the situation. So it was digital digitization of raw material production across Nestle supply chain or something like that. So this was the overall broad idea of the project. Then uh, what was the task? So he developed an Excel based macro model for raw training using VB script, VB script. And if so, so basically in this point, it's it's the point number one and point number two. So Excel based macro and uh, it is as is to be. So it, it's sort of a action that the the guy has performed. So here, if you have performed multiple analysis or it's more detailed and you have more content, you can split it across two points. Where, whereas in the first point, the, the situation and task are really covered. And if you look at the last point, it's projected output productivity improvement by 2.77%. So you have to be that precise in terms of how you uh, you know, what is your impact? And the impact should be actionable enough to write it at the bottom. And it should cover the overall project. Uh, you know, it should revolve around the project that you were during your internship or a project. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. So as you can uh, see in this, uh, it was like based based upon supply chain management and all these profiles. But if you take an example of the uh, machine learning or data science profile itself, then also you can actually relate it with uh, your things, right? Initially, what do you want to uh, achieve or like the aim? And in the second thing, you will you can see that implemented features like ADX and all these stuff. So you can write the algorithm names which you have performed. And in the uh, final point, you can write uh, like what have you uh, like the results of of uh, your performance like the actions which you have taken so in uh, it was based out of, out of analytics profile i mean the data profile and for sd profile as well you like i think for the sd profile there are nothing much as results like the percentage or the numbers you can't express any result of a website or anything like that into a, a numeric format but it is always advisable to write those numbers which you can see it here like 10 percent 87 percent 13 years, all this stuff. So it's always advisable to make your points uh, in a numeric format. So that would be the advice here. Yes, I guess uh, uh, Deep and Nikhil have covered it pretty well. Uh, and uh, as you can look at your screens, uh, the whole part, uh, the whole star method has been, uh, you know, put up very nicely. So uh, across all the internships across all the projects um, it's been put in very uh, like uh, there there is a standardization and uh, across all of them uh, it's been put in a same format so don't change the format when you're uh, putting up your projects or internships one after the other just keep the same format and uh, maintain that format throughout that's one one thing that people uh, usually make a mistake in uh, 
uh, coming to the star method if you look for the analytics profile uh, especially for machine learning or so so you can mention the uh, project description uh, you can give a description of the project what what you had worked on so that will be your first line and then the second line could come down to uh, what action you performed what kind of models you were using you can give couple of uh, names of couple of models and um, what exactly you did uh, like what kind of regression you were using maybe it could be a linear regression or a logistic regression or any any other sort of any other sort of model whatever you uh, uh, done so you could put it on that and then uh, the final results you could actually say that this model performed uh, this much percent better than that model or maybe uh, the result came out to be the accuracy of the model was this much percent so that is ideally this is ideally how you should go about for the analytics profile that's in simple moving on so if we uh, would you like to add your views on this uh yeah so uh, talking about the positions of responsibility so uh, you can again take a similar approach to the star approach for uh, for mentioning your positions of responsibility uh, points as well uh, so firstly you can put in uh, what kind of um, what kind of work have you performed in that particular position of responsibility uh, by how much uh, did you improve um, when you were a particular uh, on that particular position of responsibility and uh, what all impact did you bring so the impact here is the most important thing that comes out from your position of responsibility so uh, people usually look into what uh, what kind of impact you have created and especially when i mean impact uh, you need to let them know the numbers uh, you know uh, what kind of numbers um, you have played with or what kind of uh, budget you have used in your um, in your uh, particular tenure as a governor or as a secretary or something like that so you need to mention those numbers so those are sort of like important over here so these are uh, for important for the positions of responsibility part uh, now position of responsibility basically uh, for the sd part and for the analytics role these are not a very important sort of uh, uh, section but for the consulting part if you're going into a non tech part this part becomes a very important section so i think deep can take over better actually so so in terms of pr pr actually helps you to showcase leadership abilities and and your uh, ability as a team player uh, you know they they put forward these abilities in your resume so so when you talk about position of responsibility i think Pr pradeep ji covered pretty well out there uh, as to what exact so for example whatever tenure you had as a general secretary or a part of society self club pes whatever so so what during the overall year what was the overall key initiative that you took that you did right so that was the overall situation and basically points like leader like led a team structured a uh even from ground up something like that where where uh, you 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 are using these sort of verbs to make sure that uh, the impact is more uh, you know shown on your resume and and in terms of a result uh, it, it should be more result driven like the year on year increase in the number of students year on year increase in the number of budget so that sort of points along with uh, the the financial figures that you are handling the the teams teams you have led what was the increase in sponsorship or things like that so that actually helps uh in in position of responsibilities part yeah that's it yeah nikhil if you want to add you can go ahead uh, yeah like as pradeep said that uh, like for the software and analytics profile the pos like really doesn't matter that much but uh, i would still advise to actually fill as much as possible in pr because suppose if your internship and projects uh, together is not making your cv like till the completing one page so it's as advisable that uh, at least you can use your pors to at least fill the uh, first page of your resume right so and all, if you are writing your pors always maintain this format uh, because if suppose uh, by chance like in the software or uh, like the analytics profile any interview ask or see this pr and if 
like in by chance he asks any questions so it would be better to at least present him or her in the format of uh, like star method so like yeah as deep said that it should be result driven the pors so yeah that should be uh, kept in mind is in chat call moving on Uh, okay uh, so yeah as i was saying for the software uh, cv like in the basically the cdc software thing so uh, one thing you should keep in mind that priority to coding test and coding interviews given more over your resume okay so this is a harsh truth but i have pasted my resume i thought like it was a like golden opportunity for me to crack any software uh, internship but i saw in my experience that the coding tests and the coding interview was the only thing they were depended upon and like the resume was given like very low priority i would say uh, and also but in some cases there were uh, situations like they were asking some questions or in, like upon my past internships so that's why i would say that resume can work as a tiebreaker because suppose if you, your friend and you have actually cleared the coding test and the coding interview in the same level so they will obviously uh prefer someone who has a prior experience right so that's why resume comes into play during that point and if you are uh, mentioning like obviously you have to make a cv as, as it's a first impression so obviously in the software profile internship projects skills and expertise matters the most okay and the first part would be internships and projects itself uh whatever internship and pro self projects anything which you are doing you should mention it properly and like as much as possible you should fill it and then comes the skills and expertise part like whatever skills you have acquired whatever courses you have done you should mention that as well uh, maybe because uh, if the interviewer is in interested in that project maybe that interviewer is working on that same project like if you are using react and the interviewer is also using react uh, nowadays in his uh, project so maybe he can ask some questions out of it right so it's better to mention and bold that particular skill which you are using in that following internship so that would be the point to be uh, mentioned here and as i said pors are not given importance and in my point of view like i had also three pors but none of them asked anything related to pr at all so you can imagine like i have given multiple interviews never they were they they asked anything related to pr at all so that is a harsh truth and now coming to the uh, order of the resume uh, like i can present my screen right now to show my flaws of my resume like in the third year so or you can present like uh, just click on that link sir you can share now oh, okay fine uh, yeah i'm doing so then uh, is my screen visible you can use sir okay so yeah as you can see uh, this was my uh, cdc internship resume for the software profile uh i have mentioned multiple internships multiple projects then skills and expertise and a lo lot of other things and pos as well uh the flaws i want to talk about it first the mistakes which i actually uh, see in my resume right now uh i didn't actually uh, prioritize the star method in my resume uh, maybe it can be a drawback because as you can see my final points were not result driven so mostly my internship points were written as a action only action or task and results like i didn't mention uh, much so that would be the biggest flaw of my resume so please don't make that mistake and make your internships or projects result driven okay uh, maybe in the pr part i had given some uh, like results uh, so that like that section was pretty well of mine but yeah as i said in the projects part as you can see uh, i just write the task and what i have i used and in this also so there was no result or numbers in this so as you can clearly see like i have been given tips regarding the numbers but myself i didn't use any kind of numbers just 18000 users and all this stuff so this was a very weak thing about my cv uh, next point i would like to cover uh, yeah in this so this ordering structure right look we were discussing about the ordering structure of the software profile so it is not at all advisable even you have the strongest pr of kgp don't put it at the top if you are aiming for a software profile always put internships at the top then projects and then the skills and expertise because these three basically defines what have you learned and what have you like achieved till now in that software profile itself like it is more relatable right and prs are not relatable so 
keep it till the end and extracurricular should be at the end obviously and maybe uh, one thing can be kept in mind that if your awards and achievements basically if you have won an hackathon or any kind of stuff then you can put your awards and achievements at the very beginning like after education and before internship so if it's like something very very valuable and always try to avoid uh, one more point is there like always try to avoid your je rank like i even put that because i didn't have any other point to mention here uh, so avoid doing that because it's advisable not to put your je rank in your cv so uh, yeah and if you if you have a hackathon or any kind of stuff like any achievement which is like much more valuable than your internship then put this section at the top so these are some few pointers related to the software profile and its ordering structure so now pradipti can uh, add on to the analytics profile and then deep about the consulting yeah yeah sure Could you please put on the presentation? I'll just go. Uh, meanwhile, I want to uh, add something. Like another flaw was that, like uh, my resume was not in a proper format, as Pradipti mentioned. Uh, like the CV which was presented you before you earlier, uh, it was in a proper structure, right? Project name and then four or three points always. But in my resume, there in some of the internships there were like two points. In some projects there were five points. So it was kind of uneven. So try to avoid that and write it in a proper format for all the projects and internships. So if you are maintaining three points, try to stick with that. Three or four is fine, but don't write one, two, and then three. Like it's it seems very uneven. So avoid that as well. Uh, so basically, in the analytics part, uh, the most important part of your CV is your project part, project or internships. Uh, you can have uh, separate sections for projects and internships, so you can even club it into the same same section. And uh, in this particular part, uh, as we talked about the star method, you can mention your uh, projects or internships uh, using your star method. and uh, in the interview you will be asked a lot of questions around your internships and around your projects so be very thorough with whatever you're writing uh, don't write anything that is uh, you know uh, anything dishonestly write everything very honestly and uh, know what you're writing um, write correct terms and uh, don't use wrong terms at wrong places uh, take care of that and uh, and also in because uh, it is an analytics cv uh, try to be as detail oriented as you can be because uh, your recruiters will look at how calculative how analytical you can be and how detail oriented you are so just put in details everywhere in your cv uh, maintain a proper uh, you know uh, standardized or normalized cv where everything is in a particular format don't change the format i think apart from uh, the analytics or the machine learning part uh, they are not really interested in um, also in the skills and expertise part of your cv uh, you can mention python or r and i would especially recommend python uh, though i was uh, you know working with r and i had mentioned r on my cv but i would suggest people to mention python and if you can mention sql uh, that is a plus point uh, if you know sql that's a plus point because uh, sql is also asked in a lot of uh, um, tests and uh, interview rounds so um, sql is also a plus point uh, also while there is an ats screening of uh, different cvs uh, python if you write the words python and sql so uh, your cv is given a higher rank or higher preference so just keep that in mind uh, this is uh you know particularly regarding analytics uh i think i think there are uh i think that's all i don't think there are any other points to mention um uh, apart from these uh i think in the beginning you will be having some uh, tests for analytics and the tests will mostly be based on probability statistics and uh, logical reasoning and uh, maybe a bit of coding as well 
so that's all i think and that time i think they will not be looking at your resume at that point in time uh, they will only look at your resume after you have cleared the test so once you're done with the test and and you've crossed uh, whatever cg criteria there is for the company uh, they will be looking at your resume and yes uh, as nikhil mentioned it, your resume could be a tie breaker amongst various candidates uh, who have passed the test so that is also one thing to keep in mind make your cv nicely because it's your first impression on the recruiter yeah thank you for your views pradeep so nikhil would you like to add something Uh, like for the analytics profile can it be all the yeah i mean uh, if i can add on the analytics profile like pradeepthi has already covered for the analytics profile but i would just like to mention uh, that uh, like for the same as software that uh, keep the internships and projects at the top but a difference from the analytics and software i would say that in the software profile the in the uh, the interview itself the interview doesn't ask that much for in the software pro uh, profile but for the analytics profile they always tend to ask projects so if you are writing a machine learning project or anything uh, related to analytics data analytics please keep in mind that they will actually grill down uh, in each of the algorithm which you are mentioning so please mention it properly and if you are aware of then only mention because if you write uh, like uh, write uh, in software that you have made a website using react and all these maybe they won't ask that much like they can just ignore that and they will just start doing the coding round but for the analytics profile they will definitely ask you what algorithm you have mentioned like why didn't you use the other algorithm why did you, like why is it this better so they can grill down actually so whatever pro, uh, like projects you are mentioning the analytics profile you have to be thorough with it so yeah that would be the addition to that yeah that was very insightful so deep would you like to add anything on it no i think analytics for the word pretty much well Do you want yeah, me to so, like on finance? Yeah. So the one we can do is we can have it consult and then we can go ahead with finance. That's yeah. Okay. So we'll just move on to consulting first. So for in consulting, uh, the resume actually plays a very important role uh, because it's the first uh, round of filtering. So generally in consulting firms, there is no test or uh, uh, any any sort of uh, coding or coding or data analytics or or probability or math based test it's just resume based shortlisting and then it directly you begin with your uh, other rounds so that so that you know pans out that resume is very important and making a resume for consult consulting role is again uh, a lot important so you can see on the slide cv shortlisting is the first screening round so generally what consulting firms look at is at the uniqueness of your resume and the uniqueness of your resume can be in not necessarily but generally in any of these four parameters so these are internships academics extracurricular activities and position of responsibility these are not limited to but generally in any two or three of these broad categories you need to have extremely good and you 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 must have performed really well in those areas so coming to academics cgpa plays a very important role in shortlisting or uh, if you have a research paper published or a foreign experience that actually helps that actually adds a lot of value so for example if you are a department rank 1 2 3 uh, or if you did a depthy or you are in top some percentile that actually helps to showcase that you have done good in academics a uh, similar goes for research paper uh, if you have published during your stay at kharagpur or go, gone for an international ft that helps now about internships so internships uh, generally at mncs or old companies and at good brands actually give you a lot of value but, but that being said with the recent startups coming up uh, in, in in the last couple of years uh, startups which are more in market you know about which generally you hear news let's say for example cred so cred is a very good brand although it's a startup but a re, in an internet cred would be like valued uh, in consulting because it's a very good brand so they generally value internships uh, in branded like uh, branded brand companies and the less technical your internships are the better it is 
for consulting firms to uh, you know have a look at it because they they don't understand i would say technical a lot of technical language so even if you put it i'm not sure whether how much value will it add or will it not add so uh, trying to have your internships in those domain in those companies would be helpful then comes your a position of responsibilities so position of responsibilities also play a very important role what kind of uh, roles have you played in campus so one we have institute level hall level and others so at institute level we have gymkhana level pors which actually you know represent the student community and adds a lot of value and then you there are society cell others uh, clubs or fest these pors are also valued very much because there you are involved with a lot of uh, capital and impact i would say then then you have hall level pors uh, which are sort of general secretaries hall presidents these are also like quite valued and then you can have other pors for example if you are doing some social work or working with an organization or, or you know, sort of representative of a expert organization in your region that can also be a sort of por i would say that you can also look to add in extra curricular activities also that comes uh, majorly competitions and conferences so for example you have the right in uh, caltech or pots any of these would come here then uh, conferences like hpair or uh, harvard business school so these conferences if you have attended that actually you can add or if you have presented paper in these conferences that you can add here also a lot of value is given to entrepreneurial experience if you have had any in the past so that uh, you can actually have it as a subheading a proper like the one you have for internships you can have it for on, uh, entrepreneurial experience because that actually showcases something that you have done uh, from ground up managing multiple things and making sure that Uh, you could create an impact so that is something uh, you can add and these are the basically four point four broad buckets but there can be other buckets also as per your profile the things you have done and experienced and yeah and it's good to have a a, a very good or strong presence in any two or three of these four buckets so that actually uh, helps your uh, that actually increases the chance of getting shortlisted for further rounds so for that matter a uh, resume in consulting is, is uh, becomes very important so, yeah yeah so that was enlightening uh, so moving on to the finance profile uh, pradipti would you like to give your views on it yeah sure uh... so i am interning at jp morgan chase but uh, my role is not that of an uh, of a uh, finance inclined role it's more of an analytics inclined role uh, and i would say that uh, when finance companies come to campus they either come uh, in a combination with uh, analytics roles or with maybe um, software roles uh, as in quant profiles or uh, there are very few companies i am guessing deep might be knowing uh, i guess nomura and a couple of other companies which come for finance uh, for finance because uh, my cv wasn't that finance inclined i am probably not the right person to guide through uh, but i would say that uh, you need to have a couple of projects uh, in the relevant profile uh, a couple of uh, projects under finance profile under bg som probably uh, if if um, uh, you are interested and then uh, you have to show your inclination towards the finance profile maybe you can have a couple of courses added over there uh, a certification from cfa or frm is not a necessary thing if you have it it's definitely a plus point in your cv but it's not uh, it's not a hard and fast rule that if you want to get into the finance profile you need to have a cfa or frm uh, certification so uh, so i think uh, that would uh, that's it from my side i think deep will be able to uh, you know enlighten us a bit more on this particular profile yeah so thank deep. you pradeep ji thank yeah. you so much i think 
Pradipti summed up pretty well, but I uh, I have some pointers what I think can be good for finance profiles. So, like finance actually is quite varied, so it depends a lot I think on the role that you are applying for. So generally, a lot, a lot of finance companies, as Pradipti said, come for they come for quant roles or or sort of uh, tech side roles. But that being said, some companies do come for finance roles. Again, uh, for those companies and for those profiles, the the sort of resume is more or less similar to consult, uh, but uh, there are certain specific points that you have to take into account while preparing for those companies. Uh, the first point is that the, the CV should show an inclination towards finance, and this can be shown by uh, a number of like parameters on your uh, and points on your resume. So, so what you can do is if you have a, had an internship in a finance firm, that actually is helpful. That can be a mutual funds or or a boutique investment banking firm or any any sort of uh, investment agency. So that that actually helps. Uh, any prior projects under uh, MBA schools, it can be VG firm, it can be IM, it can be a uh, foreign school. That actually helps and. A lot of actually finance work happens in these schools rather than uh, finance firms from what I've from what I've seen and these finance firms also more or less generally hire MBA graduates so a lot of students do uh, these internships in uh, like research interns at IIM VG SOM and uh, uh, business schools for finance to gain a knowledge about finance and you can also actually take up a minor or a micro specialization if there's available in economics or a VG. So that actually you can add on your resume and that would help you out for, you know, to showcase that you are doing and learning about finance and in, uh, in that relevant field. Uh, CFFRM, uh, the point about CFFRM, it's good to have, not necessarily, not a lot of finance companies look, uh, they, they more or less tell you, like look on the aspects of your financial knowledge your know-how about what currently is going on in the market. Are you following the markets? What is the recent news that is happening in them? So, so it's uh, for, if you're preparing for finance role, it's also good to have you know prepare those points uh, as well. Apart from uh, the points listed here, you, and about FRM CFA, I think if you take a take up courses in economics, maths, and VG SOM, these are more or less very similar to. Uh, the curriculum in CFA FRM, so you can you can choose either of them. So not necessarily, but it's yeah good to have uh, about finance rules. Yeah, that was that was insightful. Uh, moving on. Uh, I'd just like to add a point uh, to finance. Yeah, so uh, basically, I feel whenever uh, there are questions in the interview, uh, like Deep mentioned, they're always uh, around whatever ha is happening in the market as of now, and they're also based on economics. So uh, always try to uh, go through these two things before get going for an interview in finance. So these are like two most important things. I think we can go ahead. That's all I, I wanted to mention. Uh, just want to add so. So in finance roles also uh, sort of uh, PORs and uh, the previous internships, they also matter uh, similar to consult. So in finance companies, what I've seen is if there's a finance specific role, uh, they also generally do not have a, a hardcore test. They also, the first screening round is resume based or as and when if they will have, they will have some sort of uh, uh, what I would say a qualitative test or sort of uh, what we have done, soft skills test, you can basically say a 20 minute, 30 minute test. Generally, that happens. Uh, to, it's a situational based test. Yeah, I remember. So, so for finance companies. So, so again, resume should be given importance if you're preparing for finance school. Yeah, thank you for your views, Adi. Uh, moving on. Uh, so, Nikhil, can you give your views on it? Yeah. Uh, so actually, this is a very good representation of whatever we actually told about these four profiles. And as you can clearly see, uh, like how uh, the profile is de dependent on these factors. As I said, uh, in the internship, the PORs, the software, it's one. So it hardly matters in the software profile. And for the analytics, it little bit matters. You can rate it as two or three. Uh, but 
I guess uh, in analytics, Pradipti, maybe like correct me that it also doesn't matter for the PR, right? In analytics profile as well. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it matters because yeah. I didn't have any questions in my PR. Exactly, and in and as you can see in the consult rule, it's like five. So how much matter? Like it does matter in the consult rule for the PR part. And now, like like let's talk about the solid profile itself. CGPA matters because at least in the CDC, I have seen that uh, eight point five or nine uh, matters a lot because. There are a lot of students who can give the test, but they actually uh, cut down the whole bunch of people by just uh, giving a cutoff mark, and only that section of students can uh, give the test. So CGPA matters a lot, uh, but uh, obviously you can't uh, right now increase it because it has already been registered in the in your ERP. So just don't worry about your CGPA right now. You can actually improve all these other uh, skill set because you can write that actually in your CV. So focus on that right now. And as a, as you can see in the software profile, it's still two. So you will be wondering that you have done a lot of internships and project uh, before, but still it is given a less preference in software profile. The reason being that they just focus on coding round and the like coding questions which they ask, and not upon the internships and projects much. And and as I said, awards and achievements matters a lot. So that's why I said if your awards and achievements is like uh, of higher priority, keep it at the top uh, because they can see that if you have won a hackathon or something like that. It will actually add a very much value rather than doing just an internship, and then extracurricular is also like the PUR part, uh, like not not much value is given to that. Certifications uh, is like like my, you guys might be thinking that certification is like very important if you have completed a course, but it doesn't matter at all in software profile because you can see any random videos in YouTube and you can actually learn software development like at least the basic development the development part. So that's why it is also given a one priority, and then skills, uh, skills little bit it matters because as I said, if the interviewer is interested in a particular skill set, if he's working on that, then it might be a good thing that he may ask upon that uh, thing, right? Like as I said in the example, if he is familiar about Django or something like that, and you have done a Django project, then it will be a better thing. Like we, you can discuss uh, upon that rather than doing a like solving a coding question. So that is all about the software profile, some summation of all these factors. So, uh, Pradeep, you can go with the analytics profile now. Yeah, sure. So, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the projects and the internships constitute the major part of the analytics profile, and as you can see, it's the most important. Uh, CGPA also is a major deciding factor because I know that uh, even in JPM, uh, uh, there were people. Uh, uh, they selected people only who were above the uh, bar of eight CGPA. So if your CGPA is above eight, it's good, well and good. If it's uh, high enough, like eight point five or somewhere around nine, it's a very good, uh, very good uh, indication for you. Uh, POR do not again uh, constitute that much of importance, and uh, uh, I did not have any questions on my POR uh, I, in any of the interviews, in fact, but. Uh, but it's good to be thorough with whatever you've done. Uh, in uh, awards and achievements, uh, I don't think they don't they ask those many questions on that as well. Uh, extracurricular is again not uh, not that uh, relevant. And for uh, certifications, uh, if you see, they're not particular certifications that you can take up in analytics, but there are courses that you can complete that uh, maybe you have completed a couple of courses from Coursera or maybe from EDX or online platforms like that. So if you've uh, completed courses like that or maybe some virtual internships or things like that, you can probably mention that in your certification section. So that also adds a couple of points. And uh, uh, based on your skills, as I already mentioned, uh, your Python and SQL are like the most important skills. You can also mention R. So R also for a couple of companies, uh, R also uh, looks like a very major playing factor. Uh, so you can mention R as well. So I think that would be for uh, analytics profile. Yeah, thank you for that, Pradeepthi. So Deep, would you like to add on something for finance and consult? I would say, yeah, sure. So, so for finance and consult, I would say the top four points that are there as PG, intern and projects, PR, awards, achievements, and extracurricular. Maybe not all are actually very relevant depending on the profile you're targeting, but at least having four or five out, like four or five out of five 
in any two or three of these definitely helps so yeah and it's good to showcase achievements for finance consult if you have any at the top if you have done really good like for example if you have been dr1 since first year so that is actually a good point that you can showcase or if you have one if you're ntsc scholar or something like that that you can showcase and certification and skills these matter a little less in both finance and consult roles but yeah i mean that being said skills and and certification the only skill i think that matters in these roles is your communication skills and your structuring skills so and apart from that i don't think it's any and for software analytics actually skills would be more important and these would be sort of tested in your your rounds so yeah yeah for insight uh, so moving on uh, pradeepthi can you uh, pradeepthi can you give your views on this yeah sure so uh, as i already mentioned there are loads of uh, cvs that come uh, for a particular profile so the first uh, the first thing that uh, recruiters usually have is a test that you have to go through right uh and once you've gone through the test even uh, even after you are you've uh, passed the test there are a lot of uh, factors that come into play and uh, your resume should actually stand out should look different than the others so that they are able to choose you amongst the so many people who have applied so a couple of things that uh, you need to uh make sure or keep in mind uh, would be that you have a consistent format uh, all across your cv uh, that you're not using different fonts at different places or different sizes of fonts at different places like um uh, one at one place you've used a font size of 10 or at some other place you've used a font size of 11 don't try to do that just keep everything very consistent uh, and uh, put up put up very standardized headings everywhere uh, put in numbers wherever it's possible uh, also try to use 75% of each line and avoid white spaces so your cv should look full it shouldn't look as if uh, it's empty anywhere so try to avoid those uh, places limit your cv to one page so uh, a one page uh, resume is what uh, we usually Uh, like recruiters usually look for and it's the it's considered to be the typically the best uh, cv so try to limit it to just one page and uh, yeah and i think uh, one important point would be that whenever you mention numbers anywhere uh, in your cv uh, try to make that also consistent for example you're using 95.25 maybe somewhere uh, you've got uh, you've got a percentage of 95.25 somewhere um in your educational uh, caliber then you can uh, you're putting it as 95.25 somewhere and somewhere else where you're mentioning that uh, somewhere else you're mentioning another number uh, you're putting in uh, maybe let's say 90.2 okay so uh, round it round that off to two numbers as well uh, write it as 90. uh 20 so that it's it's rounded off to two uh, places so that's one thing that's one sort of standardization so that everything in your cv is very standardized it looks as if it's been formatted very well so do that and uh, i would say especially for analytics profile this is something uh, they look into so uh, just try to make your cv that way i think that's yes. all from my side Yeah, thank you. So, Nikhil, would you like to add something on it? Uh, I guess Pradeep has summed it very well. Uh, so, but I would like to add some few points. Uh, that it's written that use seventy five percent of each line to avoid empty space. But I think uh, you should try to uh, fill as much as possible. Um, be, maybe because you have have been given a one line and it's like very easy to complete that line. So try to fill it till the end. and write some valid points so suppose if you don't have any valid points then just don't follow that you have to complete the line or something like that you uh, whatever you are writing it should be meaningful and it should make sense out of it so uh, please avoid just filling a rubbish in in a single line and then obviously we have discussed about the order of importance of work and all this stuff uh, another thing is like uh, you have to men mention the dates of the duration of basically of the internship or the project you are doing right so 
in ERP, it's very difficult to write the dates and like beside the title of the internship itself, we will discuss upon that later on. But yeah, uh, maintain a proper format of the dates and the title as well. So like I just gave a demo about my resume, but like, yeah, those things were like very uh, crucial. It should be very standardized as Pradeep said that each of the things which you're writing, the title and everything, it should be in a proper format. Somewhere you are writing the internship and then the city of that internship. And then in the another section you're writing uh, the city first and then the role and like that. So it shouldn't be like that. It like from beginning to the end, it should follow one proper format. And the second thing I would like to add is uh, about this. Uh, yeah, wait. Uh, yeah, the mention the numbers. So again, I would like to stress upon that part. Uh, in the analytics profile and all these consultant and all these field, you have to mention numbers as much as possible, and always be consistent about that. So yeah, I think uh, Deep, you can add on to that. Yeah, I mean, so in terms of resume, I think uh, both of them summed up pretty well. Uh, use of tables, I'm not sure, like whether you can use it or not. I'm not sure whether there's a feature to draw table in ERP or not, uh, but you can check it out and use if it's there because it will use a lot of space and consistent format and content regarding that. So you can have a consistency in formats across all your uh, internships, projects, etc. Every every bucket that you have in terms of the heading, in terms of the line, in terms of the bullet or number. If you're using bullet, you can use. If you're not using, don't use. I've always, if you are adding a full stop at the end of every sentence, just add it. Otherwise, don't add anywhere. And you can highlight sort of bold points which are there in a line or or specific numbers uh, that are there in your resume. You can be consistent with the the name of the the, the if you're mentioning a full name, if you're mentioning location, if you're mentioning the duration, if you're mentioning it, it at the middle or at the end. You can use it accordingly, but whatever format you are using. For a company or for a, uh, a like date or location, you can you should standardize it across full resume. And it's always good to have one resume. Yeah. So you have to list headings, mention numbers wherever possible. Always try because this way you are able to to show impact, right? Uh, and uh, use seventy five percent of each line is very important. Try to have, go it up to ninety percent and make sure that your resume looks full. This is more important from finance and consult point of view specifically because there it, it's not good to have a, a empty resume. So always, you know, it's better to have your line, all the lines pulled, uh, filled. Then limit your CV to one page because there are a lot of students applying and nobody has time to look at more than one page. So it's good to have only one page mention only or important thing. Order of importance of work actually depends on the type of uh, you know, strongholds that you have on. If you have a strong uh, internship, it's always advisable to mention it at the top. If you have strong uh, awards and achievements, you can mention it at the top. Whereas if you have only awards and your foreign experience, you can have it at the top and rest you can have it at the bottom. So that is sort of flexible uh, and it depends on the, the uh, previous experience that you have. Uh, both in, well, I think in, in consult, but in finance, it's good to have financial content highlighted. Let's say a model or a corporate finance model that you use or analyze that that sort of thing highlighted because your interview will revolve around those financial stuff only. Uh, so th in that way, you can prioritize order of order of importance of work and uh, precision creating. A, yeah, so yeah, I mean. This is a point. Yeah, you can your resume overall should look that you have done well and are a suitable fit for the company, at least from a resume standpoint of view. So that should be the overall objective of your resume. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'd like use. to add a point. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so it so happens on ERP that a lot of times your uh, CV is actually, uh, you know, changed or not formatted properly. So before actually uh, uploading your CV or before submitting it, just uh, have a look at your CV. And uh, if it's not formatted properly, just make the formatting proper because that's important. And it happens a lot of times on ERP. Also, you have this option where uh, you can make uh, two or 
uh, i think 3 cvs maximum uh, erp gives you the option of making 3 cvs so it is advisable that uh, you make one tech cv and one non tech cv and uh, one i guess finance uh, cv so these are three cvs you can actually make and uh, you can uh, use it to apply to different companies so that that was one point i wanted to add yeah thank you for that um, moving on we have a glossary of words can you just uh, please briefly explain their significance according to the category Nikhil, would you like to start yeah. on? Uh, yeah. So this is very important. You might be wondering, like, how come this, like, these verbs and English is coming into this play? But yeah, when you are making your resume, be it the PR section, be it the internship, or any kind of section, always try to start your sentence with these words. Okay. Keep in mind, just don't start with your sentence. I did that. I did. Uh, I developed this. Just don't start your sentence with I. Okay. Like I have seen multiple CVs. of a uh, juniors that they have start they are starting the sentence with i have developed like that so this is very vague just don't uh, do this in your cdc cv at least and try to uh, use these kind of actionable verbs like basically i would give an example right now uh, suppose you are making a like platform okay so you can write established web rtc platform something like that uh, integrated and modified the functionalities of open source platform like that you can understand right Uh, how to use the, these kind of words and fit it in your technical sentence so so it can be implemented performed uh, extracted so these are some examples which i am stating improved so these are some uh, words which can be used in software and analytical uh, cv both and uh, for the awards and achievements you can write like secured a rank bagged a rank represented your college like that so these words are very important because it it like gives an uh, insight that what have you uh, do what have you doing okay like in a sentence like just the first word can make uh, the user know like what you are doing like what have you improved or whether you have applied something so it gives a sense of the sentence itself by just using this verb yeah that was insightful uh, moving on uh, to the erp hacks so pradipti would you like to give some views on yeah uh, for the prior slide i just wanted to uh, add in a point so uh, if you're using your action verbs so just try to use different action verbs for each of your points okay so yeah. if you're using your po like writing your uh, por for example so don't write managed for each of the pors okay try to uh, try to use different words for each of them okay uh, try to have a different like a glossary of words for uh each and every line in your um, cv so that gives a very good look okay that gives a really nice impression so that's all i wanted to add yeah thanks for mentioning that yeah 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 so erp uh, like as i was mentioning so you could upload three different cvs on erp and uh, those three different could be one could be your tech one could be your non tech and one could be your finance cv or uh, if you if you want to have like i had only a tech and a non tech cv which i used to apply to different companies uh, so even two cvs are like good enough and uh, yeah always create backup of the contents and cv drafts so basically uh, it so happens that uh, your cv gets changed a lot of times on erp so it is really important to have a backup of your cv and whatever you're writing in your cv is just store it in a document or google doc or maybe like a, a, a microsoft word document so that you can actually copy it whenever you want to uh, copy it back whenever you know the formatting has changed or so uh, also like uh, i think at our time there was uh, this particular glitch in erp that uh, you weren't able to up Uh, like put in bullets or something so we just copied in uh, bullets from uh, the uh, like we copied the bullet point from the internet and then we pasted into the erp so that our whole cv looks very uh, you know very standardized so you could uh, do such kind of things as well uh, keep they like, keep checking your cv double check your cv because this happens a lot of times on erp 
uh yeah and there are uh, relevant documents uh, to be submitted in case there are any issues regarding uh, uh, your documents or you feel that uh, you're not being able to generate some uh, document you can always speak to your uh, placecom member they'll always be ready to help you out so that's something uh, i did uh, when i was not able to find something and uh, you can also do that and uh, yeah try to submit your cv uh, i would say not a day prior but a lot of days prior before the deadline because when the deadline comes everything becomes really crowded and there like lot of people who want to submit their cv so it's better to actually have your cv ready couple of days like 2 3 days at least before the deadline comes so i think those would be some of the hacks deep and nikhil if you want you guys want to add something Uh, like to add something so, yeah nikhil you go ahead. uh yeah deep you can start so one thing that you can do is like as soon as you have the access to the erp portal for making resume try to experiment it experiment it with it and make sure that how things are coming up as and when you add content this is actually very important because as the time progresses uh, uh it's not very easy that even if you have content uh, you will take some time to to align it to the erp format because their font size is different for example if you had previously an a cv in excel and there all the sentences were filled but if you copy that content to erp's format it it is so possible that the sentence is coming to the next line or a half sentence so you have to make sure that you always keep adding and checking whether each line is coming perfectly or not and also sometimes uh, it's good to have a download of the resume and always keep check of the fact that sometimes if you add bullets but sometimes bullets may be missing because of some glitches in erp that sometimes happen and so it's always be better to be cognizant of this fact and take this into account while you are preparing and making a cv so just try to explore the features uh, probably if you have a uh, you will have you may have a mock session mock cv building workshop or something like that from cdc where you can see the documents which are needed and how to upload them and make profiles so also in terms of the number of profiles that, that you can make so there are three profiles you can change the order of the content that you have in all those three cvs and a list of other things that you can do that you can definitely explore uh, while uh, during the first initial day so that uh, at the end it's not a rush Yeah, yeah. Sandeep, like to add? yeah, I I would like to add here. Uh, so in my case, then like when I was making three CVs, so it was one for was one one was for software, second one was analytics role like machine learning role, and third was for consulting like kind of uh, management role, right? So so I would give an advice here that if you have like two internships basically, uh, one was of software development and second was of analytics. So try to use the ERP in such a way that. Uh, for the software CV, the, like basically considered as a CV one. In the CV one, the software internship is at the top, and for the CV two, which would be of the analytics profile, keep the internship of the data analytics at the top. So you can actually order, reorder that as well. See, uh, the ERP has an option, so you have to explore that a lot. And trust me, you will be getting impatient while making the CV. So just don't uh, put out confessions regarding that because it happens every year. So I am just. declaring by default that you will be getting impatient and you like sometimes the bullets don't play uh, like uh, gets vanished sometimes font size is not matching sometimes you have to waste a lot of time to just put the duration at the end of the uh, like beside the title so that kills most of the time but you have to be get uh, getting it through uh, and also some few tips that uh, when you're making three cvs as i said uh, when you're uh, like writing those things in different, different sections please try to uh take a backup in uh, like any document because uh when you are changing the font size so basically suppose you want to write some two three internships or projects and suppose it's like uh, it's overflowing like the one page is finished and some fonts are going outside it so basically you have to uh, change the font size of the whole cv right it happened with me i was working with font size 10 and when i was writing all the content and then i saw that it reached up to one and a half page then i have to uh change the font size to 9 and 8 and test with that and then i saw that it is uh, like coming up to one page but the whole uh, standardization which i made was ruined because 
uh, I was writing my CV in that aspect, right? 80% of the line should be covered. So I was writing in that format. And as the font size decreased, it reduced up to 50% of the each line. So I had to again make my CV in such format that I had to write, uh, like complete the line again, like by, by writing more and more points to each line itself. So that would be the biggest consideration you have to take, like just me uh, mentally prepare your CV, like what, how many points should be there and accordingly set the font size beforehand. If your CV content is less, so take your font size to 11 or 12, I uh, guess, uh, so that you don't, you have to, you can complete the one page. And it's not like that if you write it with font size 10 and you can't complete it again, you have to make it 12 and then you have to write the, write the lines or delete the lines, some of the uh, things inside it. So just don't get into that. So that was my personal experience. So I wanted to share in this uh, regard. Yeah, that was helpful and enlightening. So now it's time that we take up some questions from the audience. So audience, if anyone has a question for the panelist, please write it in the chat box. Or if the chat box is not accessible, you can raise your hand. We'll give you the mic access. I think I see a question here in consulting. How much does the number of PR matter? Number of PRs actually matter. I mean, does not matter a lot unless and until it's a it's a good pur so if you have had good pur so so that should be justified yeah thank you for the question uh, so the ne next question is if yeah. one has done multiple internships during the same time duration does hr consider that as a negative point yeah i would like to take that question so it happened with me uh, when i was doing like kind of three four internships at the same duration so it was a very a uh, difficult situation for, situation for me as well to how to manage that. So what I had done that uh, there were some projects and internships like so I actually created two different sections. So in that internship section, I was writing from like June to uh, August, something like that. And in that same project section, I was writing uh, June to uh, August. So basically, uh, maybe the interviewer or the like the HR can uh, miss, the, miss out that point because there are two different sections, right? So you can actually uh, write in two different sections to avoid the overlapping of the duration. And the second thing, if your two projects are of this in the same duration, I would suggest you to write it in such a way that it overlaps in the minimum time duration, right? So basically, you, like you have to lie a little bit. Uh, if you have done an internship from July to August, the next internship can be like uh, like the prior internship can be right from April to June. So you can say to the resume, or like the HR or interview that you just left that internship in June itself and join another internship. So I would suggest to try to maintain the minimum overlapping as much as possible. Yeah, I would like to add to that, that if, uh, if you don't want to do that, if you don't want to change the durations of your internship, you should be uh, ready to actually, uh, you know, can convince the HR if they're asking such a question. Uh, it's just based on you that if you're able to convince them that I was able to manage two or three internships in uh, in the same time period, then it's good enough. Uh, yeah, correct. That can also be a second situation. Like if they right. ask. Do we need to submit in certificate of internships and people I can take up that. So yes, you need to submit the certificates of the internships that you have done or the projects that you have had. And uh, for that matter, if you have a POR, if that POR is a present POR, you do not need to submit as per my information. But if you have had a POR in the past, which is which you are not currently holding, for those you need to submit the proof. Yeah, some I guess sometimes uh, screenshots of PORs also work or, or yeah, so okay. I think. Right, like, so if, if you are doing an internship right now, let's say you have to put that in your resume. So if you have a screenshot of the offer letter or something like that, uh, that also works in case if you do not have a proper certificate or a letter. So just, yeah, you can keep things on top of that. Right, right. Yeah, so the I next think 
Yeah, so as there are no more questions here. Uh, so now, as we come to the end of today's panel discussion, uh, I would like to thank Pradeepi, Nikhil and Deep for sharing their experiences and giving us their valuable advice. I believe this discussion will surely benefit the students for the CV building. I sincerely thank all the panelists for giving us your precious time today and guiding us all through the discussion. Thank you very much. And thank also you. to our so to our amazing Janta, thank you so much for making this session more interactive. You all have been really engaging and active. This is the end of our session. You all are free to disperse.